Hey guys, so we're gonna do slurps. Hopefully you can see me. So today is, okay, I don't wanna call it like National AIDS Day because it sounds really awkward, but I guess it's like AIDS Awareness Day. And one of the more common questions I get from working in the tattoo industry and body painting industry is what do you do if somebody has a blubber pathogen? Blubber pathogens are things like HIV, hepatitis, um, any of those wonderful things. So we treat everyone like they have HIV. We treat every single person that walks into our studio like they have every disease possible. That way, if someone does have it, we're not going to affect the people who don't have it. If we treat everybody like they have it, then we're not gonna worry about it. We're never gonna discriminate against someone who have, for having a disease. Um, luckily, HIV is not a death sentence like it was 20 years ago, but at the same time, we wanna make sure that we keep everyone safe, clean, and happy. So I'm gonna show you, we're in our clean room right here. We clean room. So I'm gonna go through the, the steps that we take to make sure everyone is safe. Okay, okay, all right, so let's show you. Do, 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 do. Now, I will admit that I'm horrible at the proper names um, because I'm like a 10 year old and I call things like the shaky machine. So I'm gonna try my hardest real quick and not call it the shaky machine, okay? So first things first, this is our clean room. This is our sterile, sterile sterilization environment. And then we have our sink to clean everything with, okay? Okay, so, and of course, I wash station. All right, so first things first, as you see, we have a sinuses dirty area and a sinuses clean area. Obviously, everything dirty is here and eventually becomes clean over here. So we're gonna go through the actual steps. So after we've tattooed someone, we take the tube, which is the, if you look into this little thing here, the tube is actually into the machine where the needle goes that actually holds the ink and also will get the blood and all that fun stuff on it. Now the first step we take is we put it into this right here. Now this is, they call it, according to this, <laughs> It is the ultrasonic cleaner. I just call it the soaky. Like we just call it, we just put it in the soak. So this is the soak and basically we use our ultrasonic cleaner and some sterile water and we soak them in there until they're ready to be cleaned. So that could be anywhere from 24 hours to a week depending on how many we have. As you see right now, we have about 12 in there, so I'll probably be cleaning them sometime today. So the minute we get them out, we of course never touch them with our bare hands, we touch them with gloves, we you know break down the machine, break down the whole entire setup, take the tubes, put them in the solution, and they soak for at least 24 hours. Once that's done, we actually take them out of the solution and we put them in the second machine. Now, because like I said, I'm a 12 year old, I call it the shaky machine, because it shakes up everything. It is not the shaky machine, it is actually, let's see if it says what it's called on it. Do, 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 do. Damn, it actually says what it is, let's see. <laughs> Basically, we put it in here with this. This is the enzyme active powder detergent. Basically, when you put it in here, I'm gonna open it up real quick so you guys can see because it's clean. That is where you put all the tubes. You put the tubes in there with water. Nice stir, nice water that you put in here with some of our detergent. And basically, once you put the heat on, which if you look at the stools here, heat, and this goes up to six, this is goes up to 30 minutes. So you do it for a full hour. And pretty much it just shakes everything because all the debris and everything off of it and gets all of this detergent powder into the tools to keep them closer to clean. Now, once that is done, so we've soaked it here for about 24 hours. We've done used this for about an hour. Once that is all done, we then take everything out of here and we actually take the digit tray that goes into the sink with this. Okay, now this itself is called the dry heat sterilizer. We actually have a two sterilizer system here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll take one of these trays here. Of course, obviously the empty tray. Go in here, we're actually gonna take our tools, which we have down here. Do, 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 do. These are all our tools and things to clean out the tubes. So we clean the inside and the outside of the tubes. So basically we take the tubes, we rinse them out, we clean them out, we scrub them. We scrub our tubes, make them nice, sterile, as clean as humanly possible, and put it onto our actual tray. Once the tray is all nice and full, we take the tray and we put it into the dry heat sterilizer. Um, sorry about that weird block in there. Um, it got really loud in the back and we're having a hospitality night, so I wanna make sure everything was okay. Anyway, so this is a our dry heat sterilizer. Now, if you look at the actual thing on here, we put it up to, it goes up to 120 minutes. And it's basically, it uses heat to kill all germs <laughs> to make sure everything's nice and sterile. So we have now soaked it for 24 hours. We have now, Clean all the debris out of it for an hour with heat. Then we have actually cleaned it by hand in the sink with our actual cleaner. And then we have put it in the dry heat sterilizer. After we put the dry heat sterilizer, it gets really, really hot. So I usually put it in there and then overnight, the next night I will open it up, let it cool off and take those. And then I take them and then put them into, dun, dun, dun. So these are all our autoclave stuff. This is our monitor strips. These go into every single packet. This was let you know that it actually is cleaned. Uh, steam gas indicator, these are indicator strips. 
It says right here, if it turns dark brown, it was clean in, stream, in steam. Depending on what tool we're using, it will go in these little pouches with the little white thing and of course the piece of jewelry, the tube, whatever we're going to use. Now this here, even though it says needles, is actually, this is, dun dun dun, oop, backwards a hat. This is our Vapor Line Pass Fail Sterilization Integrator. Basically, you put this into the sterilizer with the packets, and then you're going to run it for about an hour. Because, yeah, it's 30, 30 second, 30 minute intervals, and you run it twice, so you run that for an hour. So, all together, you have 24 hours, an hour, then about 20 to 30 minutes to actually scrub them by hand. Then you put them in the dry heat sterilizer where it bakes all the dirt off of them, all the grime, all the blood or pathogens, all the, the bad things off of them. And then from there, we put them into the steam sterilizer where it sterilizes it all over again. So everything we use is nice, clean, sterile, and safe. That is our biggest concern. We make sure everyone is nice and safe. Um, most tattoo shops that you go into, if you ask them, where are your sterilizers? Can I see your sterilizers? They should be comfortable with showing you this whole environment. If they are not comfortable with showing you this environment, do not go there. Now, this is also our logbook. If you look at our logbook, it literally says the date, what was actually in there, the temperature that we had the sterilizer, which is this one here at, and prove that we actually did it with the integrator. Um, any studio that you go in, again, that says it's not comfortable to show it to you, you might as well do it. Now, we test our autoclave once a month to make sure it's running properly. So as you see, every month of the test, today's December 1st, so we are going to do December very soon. This is the clean area, because everything that's over here by this point is pretty much sterile. And that's why this is considered the dirty area, because everything in here is semi-dirty. Now, that's what we've gone over with all of uh, tattoo equipment. Now, what about piercing stuff? As for piercing stuff, I'm not going to touch it because my hands, I do not have gloves on. But we put all piercing tools in here. Once a week, we take all piercing tools, and we take them, and we put them with this stuff here. This is micro-lube instrument lubricants, and it also helps kill germs um, and neutralize PC and no rust and all that fun stuff. And we will take this and we will soak the um, instruments in that. Usually leave it in here. I usually put them in here and leave them in for at least an hour or two, 24 hours. Shake them up, make sure they're all nice, debris on, rinsed, all that kind of stuff. After about the hour, I usually take them out. I will scrub them, just the same tools that I've used for the, uh, well, same type of tools that I've used for the tattoo uh, tubes, I will use for all our piercing equipment. Um, the only thing is with the piercing equipment is they don't go through all these other steps. They pretty much get cleaned. I will lay them out here on a paper towel with, with uh, rubbing alcohol, spray them with alcohol, let that dry, and then I will take them, put them in the pouches, just like we do with the tattoo equipment and the indicators and the integrators, and I will put them in the pouches, and then we will sterilize them for an hour. So everything is nice, clean, and ready to go. So that is how we keep everyone as safe as humanly possible. Um, there are, you know, there are steps to make sure that no one ever has to get a disease from a tattoo shop.